Hello, my name is Gray. And my name is Crystal. And this is Busty Asian Beauties, the supernatural commentary podcast where I, someone who has seen this show several times. And I, someone who only knows the show through social media, discuss every single episode of Supernatural from start to finish. Also, we are both Asian. Both Asian! So for today's episode, you'll be discussing Season 1, Episode 20, Dead Man's Blood. Written by Catherine Yumfries and John Shaban, directed by Tony Warmby. Wait, oh my god, Catherine Humphreys worked on Elementary Elementary, as well? yeah, yeah. Okay, all I, the I good gonna... things in this episode were her, and all of the bad things were John Shaban. I've decided <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, uh, before we start with the episode... Uh, Crystal and I, again, have an announcement. We're pregnant again! <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're pregnant again. <laughs> but also that we're, we're doing, doing a Q&A. A Q&A. <laughs> okay, so we're having a Q&A uh, for, to mark the end of our Season 1 rewatch. So we will be accepting questions or any uh, feedback that you want our response on dir- directly through our Tumblr asks ads and dms twitter ads and dms youtube comments and emails so uh, all of those links are in our description for the podcast so just (laughs) contact us send us us questions you guys yeah please send us questions do send us questions and the deadline of the questions are april 3 2022 so if you're listening in the future my bad at uh uh, 12 a.m. So, zero zero Eastern Standard Time, which is 12 noon in the Philippines. If you are one of the 12 people from the Philippines who listen to us, <laughs> yeah. And to clarify, that's midnight on April 2nd. So, the very beginning of April 3rd or the very end of April 2nd Eastern Time. Yes, that's like a day and a half after we release uh, the last episode of season one. So, it's a it's a bit of a tight schedule, but I hope you guys send your questions in still. Yeah, and you can send them in about earlier episodes. It doesn't have to be about the finale. So, hopefully, yeah. there will be something. Yeah, uh, we prefer we would prefer like if you focus on season one, but if you just have general questions about the show, the the podcast, and supernatural, it's also fine. Thank you guys for sending in questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's start with the episode itself. Dead Man's Blood. We are nearing the end of season one. Crystal, what did you know about this episode going in? Um, well, I know Dead Man's Blood is the way to weaken a vampire. Um, and I also know that we haven't gotten to Jenny yet in season one. <laughs> so... I was pretty sure this was the Jenny episode, and also that uh, the vampires have the cult in some way, and John comes back, and that's sort of the plot of the episode. Uh, but I guess I didn't know the details. Oh, also I knew that they used Dean as bait. I have a question, by the way. Who is Jenny? Jenny? Is the girl who got captured with her boyfriend and then forcibly yes, turned right? into a vampire. Did yeah. we ever hear her name? Because I'm huh. willing to bet no. Sorry, I just control f for Jenny in the transcript and there's no results. So, is this or is this not Jenny? I mean, it is, right? It. I'm pretty sure it, it is. But... Like, the whole time I was like, when are they gonna say her name? And how is Dean gonna know her name? Because at the finale, Dean goes, yeah. Jenny! And it's like, who the fuck is this chick? <laughs> I'm sorry for calling her chick. Uh, Dean is rubbing on me. Great third misogyny moment in this podcast. But yeah, I... Yeah, no, they literally never say her name! How? They literally never say her name. So I was like, like while watching, I was like, this is for sure Jenny, right? But 
Uh, I was convinced that she's gonna show up again, like, next episode. Because they don't resolve her plot. We don't even know that she becomes a vampire. We do. Her little yell hiss was not a a human vocal cord sort of yell hiss. Yeah, but, like, it's not, like, oh, she's part of the pack now or anything, you know? Um, yeah, she is because she helps Kate... She like grabs Kate. Oh and tells really? Her to For run real? After. That was her. Yeah, I couldn't tell either, but I had to look up her actress and like put the faces next to each other and stare for a bit. Apparently, my face blindness doesn't only exist for white men; <laughs> it also exists for white. <laughs> Sorry, women. women. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's start with the actual episode. Enough pre banter. So uh, the previously on in this episode. It's very good. It's so good. Mm. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of the scenes that we see in this previously on are clips that they haven't used before. What did you think about this previously on? Did you like it as well? Um. Well, as we've mentioned, Sam and John is the thing that we are sensitive about. And this previously on was basically the Sam and John speed run. So yeah, I enjoyed it. Uh, after that, we go into a bar. So someone is sitting by the counter of the bar. And this person is flipping through what looks like a hunter's journal. It looks exactly like John's to the point that I thought it was John's. So I was like, oh, it's Dean. And then we pan to his hand, and it's an old man's hand, and I was like, oh, it's fucking JDM. I need to stop calling JDM JDM. Like, he's John Winchester, but also he is JDM. They have the same face. They do. <laughs> that's that's such a weird thing to say, though. Like, they have no, the same face, like, but... of course. But, like, Sam no, but doesn't look, look like they... Jared. Yes, Sam doesn't look like Jared Padalecki. Cass does not at all look like Misha Collins. At all. Dean and yeah. Jensen Ackles look sort of similar. Yeah, and JDM is literally John Winchester. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we pan to the face. It's not John or Dean. It's this guy named Mr. Elkins. So we get some exposition from the bartender that Mr. Elkins is basically an old man who lives by himself and sits on that seat every single day, flipping through his notebook. And she's talking about him, like, two feet away from him, calling him a nut. Like, girl! Yeah! Suddenly, a group of younger people, I guess late 20s is the vibe? Maybe, yeah. And they're, like, supposed to feel like punks, right? Right. We're supposed to be afraid of them because they wear leather jackets and look cooler and sexier than everyone else. They get in the bar and Mr. Elkin's eyes, who at this point we think is a hunter because of his notebook, eyes them up really suspiciously, which, you know, makes us feel like these punks are monsters in some way. Uh, They request a bottle of Jack. And when the bartender turns around, she notices that Mr. Elkins is not there anymore. We cut outside to a truck and Mr. Elkins is driving it. He steps out of the truck and into a cabin, which is apparently his house. And he notices a girl inside, the same girl from the bar. She says, like, it's been a while. I gotta say, you look old. And he asks what she wants. And she says, what do you think? Like, this girl speaks in a certain way. That's like, Mm. I don't know, supposed to be sexy, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I also don't know, but she speaks a certain way. And it is a fascinating, like, voice that she puts on. I think it's just supposed to be a vampire voice or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He throws a knife at her, and she looks down at it and pulls it out of her chest. Cascor! Very Cascor! And the hunt begins. So the man goes into a room and locks it by moving a cabinet against the door. He goes to his safe, where he brings out a colt and starts loading it. So, okay, I have a question for you. Mm Mm-hmm. For example, I say, this person has a cold revolver. Are you able to visualize what that looks like? I don't know anything about guns. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna mention this because 
I had this conversation once with a person in the classroom that like I, I said like oh I don't he was talking about guns and I said mm. oh I don't really know what a pistol is and what a revolver is <laughs> like I don't know like what a rifle looks like you know shit like that yeah. and then he started explaining to me the difference between every single one of them and I was like wow. oh this guy is an expert in guns that's fascinating and then suddenly like a guy hears us from like the other side of the room and then he comes mm. over and then suddenly every single guy in the class was around me talking to me about <laughs> guns and i was so <laughs> shocked because like apparently this is common knowledge for some people and i know nothing but like they explained to me that they play games uh-huh. so that's how they oh, know oh yeah video games that makes sense yeah and I'm not a gamer, no matter how much I talk about Red Dead Redemption in this podcast. I am not a gamer, so I don't know jack shit. The only thing I know is that from that conversation, I know, and from Supernatural, I know that a revolver is the one with the barrel that revolves. And <laughs> that's the only thing I know. He's loading the revolver, and the girl is n- trying to knock down the door. Suddenly, uh, two guys drop from the glass ceiling and the lady from the door is now finally able to uh smash it open as the two men hold elkins down the girl enters the room and picks up the colt she says like nice gun won't do you any good of course then to her pals she says boys we're eating in tonight and then elkins screams and we cut to black also, Supernatural this episode is really trying to establish that they're hashtag not like other vampires. And I think that they the zoom in on to Kate's cross necklace is sort of supposed to be part of that. Like, look, she's wearing a cross necklace and it's not hurting her because we're special. Also, this episode, I feel like Supernatural really was saying we're so dark and greedy. Like, guys, haven't oh, you not. noticed I know. that we are so dark and greedy? We're not like those other loser vampire shows. I know we referenced Buffy, like, in Hell House, but that was to make fun of it. Because we're so cool. These vampires have sex and make sex noises and sexually assault people. Hi. Like, okay, cool, Supernatural. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, so we cut to a cafe where Sam's laptoping it up and Dean's looking through a newspaper. Uh, they're looking for cases. Uh, and they can't really see anything. And Dean says, hey, you know, we could just keep heading east, specifically to upstate New York, so you could see Sarah again. Um, and then he calls her a cool chick and smoking and whistles yeah what is that misogynistic i don't know i i think he's just trying to hype sam up but even then yeah. it still has a bad taste you know yeah it's kind of weird can i have yeah. a point five Again, like, I've told you about my feelings about <laughs> Yeah, okay, point fine, fives. no point five. Uh, and Sam says, maybe someday, but in the meantime, we've got a lot of work to do, girl, what work? <laughs> they read about Elkins' murder in Colorado, uh, and Dean recognizes the name, and he starts looking through John's journal, and he sees that D. Elkins is a contact there with a Colorado area code. So they head over to his cabin. Sam and Dean uh, go to Elkin's house and they find a couple of things. Sam finds a ring of salt by the door and Dean finds Elkin's journal, which he says looks like John's, but this one goes back to the 60s. Uh, so given this information, we're, like, really sure that this Elkins guy is, like, a hunter. Also, Mm. uh, we all know that I have a tendency to acquire objects that are supernatural related. No, great. (laughs) No. Uh, let's recap. What I have is I have Dean's ring. I have a leather jacket. Actually, that's pretty much it. Really. 
I don't have a journal. I have been looking for years for a journal Aww. that looks like John's. But I can't find any. Because one, either I find something and it's so expensive. But also it looks so polished, you know? Yeah, like it's new and shit. And the whole point of John's journal is it's a battered up piece of uh, writing equipment. Yeah, so if anyone here knows where to buy <laughs> A replica of John's journal, please do contact me because I've been looking. Outside of the house, we see someone. So, suspicious. Uh, back inside, Sam and Dean are looking around with their flashlights. They go to the study and they find the mess in there. And there's bloody scratches on the floor. At first, they were like, mm, maybe it's just, you know, he was just clawing his way out like trying to fight when he was being eaten by whatever. Dean takes a pencil and paper and does like the thing that you do when you're tracing a leaf, you know, <laughs> or a yeah. coin, I guess, uh, where he like scratches out the scratches basically with the pencil. And he finds that the scratches say three letters and six digits. So, it's the location and combination of a post office box. It's a mail drop, baby, and it's exactly how John does it, or like has instructed them on how he does it. So, the boys rec recognize it as a hunter's code of some sort. So, they go to the post office and find a letter, and when they go back to the Impala, we see that the back of the letter says... JW. Uh, they're debating whether or not to open it when the worst jump scare of Supernatural happens. There's a knock on the Paul's window. Dean gasps and then we look and it's John. Ew. And he's, he's smiling. He's fucking smiling. Like, I did not forget what you did in something wicked, John. Okay, like episode 16, he's like, hi, yes, so true, we are weaker together, bye. And then like two episodes later, he's like, hey, what if I like brought up a sight of your biggest childhood trauma and also made you feel really guilty? And then he just shows up again, smiling, and it's like, it's not even because he wants to see his kids, it's because he wants the fucking cult. Like, fuck off, Sean. <laughs> So, yeah, John shows up fucking smiling, and then he gets into the back of the car. Uh, Sam asks what he's doing here, and John says, I read the news about Daniel. I got here as fast as I could. And, and I was like, first in I, faith? I was like, what about faith, bitch? Yeah. Literally in faith, you couldn't be bothered to come when Dean was dying? Like, would you have come if he died? immediately you fucking asshole yeah but it was because he wanted the cult not because he cared about daniel so i get yeah. it i suppose but still the way they talk about it they were like he was like he was an old friend and we yeah. had a falling out and like sam and dean are like you never told me about him and he's like looking wistfully into the distance oh are like you saying <laughs> secret boyfriend <laughs> John X Elkin, bro. <laughs> Elkins was probably more of a mentor figure, and I don't think John was practicing whatever the Greeks and Romans were doing, but also, <laughs> like, I can't accept it a little. I think John Zizel is dead, and John Elkin is the way to go. <laughs> okay, Sam asks why he didn't come into the house when he saw um, him and Dean go inside, and he says you know why and he says because i had to make sure you weren't followed by anyone or anything he literally like i get that they're trying to fl frame him as a good hunter but he literally mm -hmm. just comes off as a paranoid fuck right of it yeah sam and dean in the future they hunt and it's not like like it's a dangerous gig but it's not super dangerous <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah, they die. Like Dean dies <laughs> in a hunt, but like, <laughs> but like, it the way sh the show portrays it, like it did it. It doesn't need this kind of vigilance, you know. Mm. But I guess that's more a factor of like what we find out in the future. 
But like, given what yeah. we know now, does it warrant this kind of vigilance? I don't really know because like I don't have that perspective anymore of only knowing season one. What do you think? Mm. I don't know. I I mean, honestly I think John's full of shit, and he just thought it would be awkward to go in, so he made up some bullshit hunting excuse <laughs> that he didn't go in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Uh, Sam asks about Elkins and. John says, as you mentioned, that he was a good man, he taught him about hunting, they had a falling out, and he hadn't seen him in years. John opens the letter, and it starts with, if you're reading this, I'm already dead. And then he asks if they saw a Colt revolver anywhere in the cabin. Uh, Dean mentions the empty case that he saw, and John says, Okay, well, they have it, and we gotta find them. Sam says, Wait, you want us to come with you? And, like, I didn't know how to read his expression in this scene. Like, was it, like, surprised? Was it, like, pleasantly surprised? I don't know. I think it was just surprise. Probably so. So, John says that they have to find the gun, because it's important. He won't answer any of Sam's questions about why the gun is important, but John does tell them that who killed Elkins was vampires. Dean goes, vampires? I thought there was no such thing. And then John says that he thought that they were extinct? Come on, bro. This is like... (laughs) Supernatural Tumblr is, like, number one piece of evidence that John's a bad hunter, and I agree. Like, come on, bro. (laughs) He literally said that he thought Elkins and everyone else had wiped them out. First off, there are so many other countries in the world. I don't think Elkins was flying to every single continent killing all the vampires, bro. Also, like, this- this is, like, evidence that- he really does keep Sam and Dean, one, like, separated from other hunters, two, like, Mm -hmm. separated weirdly from the hunter life. They don't know basic shit like this. It's it's fascinating that they don't. They rely so much on John, and Mm -hmm. we kind of feel like John is, like, you know, kind of incompetent. It's it's weird that, like, Sam and Dean feel, like, so ignorant about a lot of things, supernatural related which makes me think that maybe john like this is really their first go at it like john going missing and sending them on hunts is their first go at like actual hunting hunting i think so they probably well dean probably worked with john in all of the past times though uh well didn't sam have a line where he was like dad let you go on hunts alone so I guess yeah. he probably did go alone, but usually, like, John was probably waiting back at the motel or something. Right, so John starts telling them about vampires. Uh, he says, most vampire lore is crap. A cross won't repel them, sunlight won't kill them, and neither will a stake to the heart. Why does Supernatural need to have special little vampires? Like, whatever. Just let them be, like, vampires as we know them. He says that they need fresh human blood to survive. John says they were once people, so you won't know it's a vampire until it's too late. Kate is so goddamn pale, you can tell. While all of this is happening, it's laid over a scene where the vampires that we saw earlier are hanging around in the side of the road. Just drinking, having fun, playing music. They see a car pass by, and the lady, Kate, that we saw earlier, says to one of the guys, like, it's all yours, baby. And so in the car that's passing by, a couple are having a bit of a laugh inside. They're just talking. When suddenly, they see a guy passed out in the middle of the road. So they stop, and the guy in the couple goes out to check on the guy on the floor the girl calls 911 while this is happening the guy turns the vampire over and the vamp opens his eyes and reveals his retractable teeth 
and the guy gets eaten basically well he gets grabbed he gets grabbed yeah that's true he gets kidnapped and Mm -hmm. you know we assume that both of them get kidnapped yeah and also the woman is jenny but we never learn her name as we've mentioned yeah it's so weird why bring her back then weird i don't get it i do not know i i guess if they wanted to i guess maybe they decided that they were gonna end with a vampire case so they were like let's just call back to our first vampire case and that was the only actor from that episode that they could get they i mean kate is a very like kate exacting revenge for Luther's death makes sense, right? Yeah, Jenny does not. So we get to a motel room. Sam and Dean are sleeping on top of the sheets with their shoes on. Come on, guys. Meanwhile, John is sitting at a table listening to police radio. I do think it's nice that he let Dean and Sam have the beds since there are only two in the room. <laughs> but that's like the only nice thing I'll say. It's Sam and Dean's motel room. Oh, right, right. John probably just, yeah, John didn't want to pay for his own. I understand now. <laughs> never mind. John has never done anything correct in his life. He wakes up Sam and Dean and says that he heard a police call where a couple called 911 because they found a body in the street, but when the cops got there, everyone was missing. So, it's the vampires. Sam asks, how do you know? And John says, just follow me, okay? They head out to the crime scene, and Sam's kind of annoyed about how John's the one talking to the cops while Sam and Dean have to hang behind. Dean says, don't tell me it's already starting. Sam says, what's starting? (laughs) <laughs> uh, so John shows up and gives them directions on where the vampires are going to be heading. Sam says, how can you be so sure? And Dean says cautiously, like, Sam? Um, but Sam says that he just wants to know that they're going the right direction. And John just says, we are. When Sam asks again, John finally says that he found a vampire tooth at the scene and then he'd ask Sam any more questions in like an annoyed fashion and Sam shuts up. John tells them to start heading out. As he's walking away he throws over his shoulder. Hey Dean, why don't you touch up your car before you get rust? I wouldn't have given you the damn thing if I thought you were going to ruin it. And I literally started crying. You told me that before I watched the episode. So I was like, oh, maybe that scene is more emotional than I remember. No! (laughs) And I watched it and I was like, Crystal's Crystal's going through it, I think. (laughs) Yeah, no, like I watched Turning Red yesterday and I like sobbed through the whole thing too. I think I'm just being sensitive about parent-child relationships this week. No, but okay, the thing is, it's just such a cruel thing to say. Because I think John knows how much pride that Dean takes in them, Paul, and we also know after something wicked, um, like you said, that Dean sees John as seeing him as a soldier, just a soldier and not even a good one. So yeah. Dean being given the Impala was probably like a huge moment for him, right? Like it's probably one of his best memories with John. Um, it's probably a moment when he was like, oh, thank God, like my dad thinks I'm worthy of something. He's giving me this gift. And like it, whenever he has it, he can remember that moment of pride. And I think John, like throwing out a line like that just ruins that memory, right? Because now it's not like, um, like I'm proud of you, son. Here, have this car. I think you're like brave it's enough like to have it. It's like another responsibility. Yeah, it's a conditional thing now. It's like every time you're with this car, like you need to be on edge thinking like, am I taking care of it enough to make my dad still proud of me? So it's just, ugh. It's just bad. Yeah. It's just bad. But you know what, John? Fuck you. Dean picked out the car. It is his car. Fuck you, John. Oh, every time I remember that, I literally like 
tear up a little that he picked the car. He literally picked the car. It's his car from the get go. Yeah. Anyway. Also, I'm still not a teen girl. <laughs> um, so I kind of am, though. Yeah. I'm I know going you through are. it as well. Right. Uh, so Dean looks away kind of sadly, and Sam looks at Dean like a like a look, like I like see John is a dick face. And that's the end of that scene. Yeah, and we see also that John's car is literally a fucking monster truck. <laughs> it's literally the no. racist truck. Literally, it's the racist truck. And the shot of the Impala driving behind John's truck is so funny because the Impala is so short and flat and John's truck is so tall. So it just looks like Papa truck and baby truck. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam is driving. And while he is, Dean is reading out vampire lore. So we learn that they nest in groups of 8 to 10 and smaller packs are sent out to hunt. And by hunting, they mean they kidnap people, they bring them back to the nest, and then bleed them out for days or even weeks at the time. He says that that's probably what happened to the 911 couple, and Sam says, yeah, that's probably what Dad thinks happened to the 911 couple. Of course, it would be nice if he just told us what he thinks. So true, Sam. And Dean looks at Sam funny and says, so it is starting. And then he says, like, we've been looking for Dad for a year. So, time marker... It's been a year. Mm. And now he's been back for a couple hours and there's static already. Sam's like, no, no, no. I'm happy he's here. I'm happy he's working with us. And Dean's like, good. And Sam continues, he says, but the way he treats us like children. To which Dean's like, oh, God. Like, Dean is so exasperated throughout this entire scene. Yeah. And Sam proceeds, he's like, he barks orders at us and expects us to follow without question. He keeps us on a crap need-to-know deal. So and true, Dean says, Sam. Like, he does what he does for a reason. Sam says, like, what reason? He's obviously like very riled up at this point dean says like there's no margin of error in her job no time to argue and throughout this sam is like scoffing and making faces he says maybe that worked when we were kids but not now not after everything we've been through dean and sam asks if dean really is just fine with falling in line and quote letting him run the whole show like letting john run the whole show and this scene i had to pause like because dean after that says yeah if that's what it takes and it's like i, I was like god and by god i mean like both like the expression god but also like literally like god in supernatural like it this conversation reminded me of chuck and it reminded me of dean in unity basically when he was like mm. i cannot let him control my life anymore and how like that is very much not only a reaction to chuck but also a reaction to john right for him it's like all my life i've never had a choice i've never had a say he's not just talking about chuck there like he's talking about everything mm -hmm. he's talking about john as well the fact that he goes from like i'll i'll just do whatever it takes like i'll, I'll i'm just fine with whatever to that person it's like both like go dean but also like it's so sad <laughs> right because in unity his whatever it takes is shooting sam yeah uh, like I, I find Unity so fascinating. We'll get to it when we get to it in three, in three years. years. <laughs> but like, I find it so fascinating because people like to say it's out of character. But I genuinely right. do think it's a natural progression of Dean's character from way, way back here. Like, we mm. get Dean here. And as he progresses, he turns from... I'll just let people control my life to like fuck that. I'll control my own life and I'll do and whatever. Everyone else is. Yeah. Like he goes from being controlled to being the controller. And I think that's like natural progression of his character. And it's yeah. amped up to ten. Like his his terrible death is amped up to ten. But it makes sense. Like it's not out of character. So that's my hot take of the day. Dean Unity is not out of character. <laughs> 
Yeah, I mean, I yeah. guess I cannot speak on that, but I'm gonna agree with you for now. Thank um, you. And also, I also think that, like, Dean, his experience as being the one who was controlled, but, like, specifically the one making a bunch of excuses for John probably helped him excuse his own behavior when he became the mm-hmm. controller as well. So, yeah, he's been preparing for this all his life, baby. <sighs> Fuck. <sighs> Yeah, anyway, Sam in the scene is great, though. I love Sam so much. He's so good. Um, so, we cut to the vampire's nest, where the vampires are having the world's worst party. There's, like, three people there. There's barely any music playing. It's just some guy sitting on a couch and some woman in a cowboy hat, like doing a half-hearted lap dance in the air at him. Like, that's basically it, right? So, and the couple from before are tied to a pole. So, a vampire is offering the guy some beer because he wants the guy to drink enough so that he can taste it in his blood. And Kate shows up, too, and says that that's gross. Uh, the guy vampire offers the beer to... Jenny, uh, and then sort of forces it down her throat, uh, but then she spits it back into his face. He is about to hit her for this, but Kate says, Bo, wait for Luther, and then the door opens, and some guy walks in, and he's like, do you think that he's, like, deliberately, like, a hot vampire? I, I was thinking he looks like someone from Twilight. Like, I exactly. don't know Twilight enough to know who he looks like, but he looks like a guy from Twilight. Yeah, like, just some, like, platonic ideal of guy from Twilight. Right, so this is Luther, and I'd say out of all of the vampires, he's the one who looks the most human in terms of, like, his skin looks the least pasty, and also I think his voice, he's sort of- a lot of the vampire actors are putting on a bit of a hissy voice, but he's sort of just talking normally. Yeah. So yeah, we know that he's supposed to be a big deal because he's here to be a hot, normal guy vampire. Yeah, and also he has the personality of like uptight, you know, like uptight mm-hmm. person. So we know that he is the boss. He comes in and Kate throws herself at him and they start making out. He says that he missed her too. She presents Kate and, or sorry, Jenny and her boyfriend to him as presents. Luther says that Jenny looks interesting, but her boyfriend doesn't. So he tells them to take the boyfriend away. And he says, the vampires can go and treat themselves. So they start eating the guy. And he's screaming and stuff. Uh, yeah. Kate takes Luther away further and shows him the stuff that they confiscated from Elkins. Luther is concerned about this because he says that Kate shouldn't have killed Elkins because it'll bring other hunters here. Kate says that she did it for him because he killed Luther's family. And Luther says, revenge isn't worth much if you end up dead. Yeah, someone should tell this to the Winchesters. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Like, which is, yeah, an important line in Supernatural, I'd think, but maybe not. And then he notices the cult and he says... Oh, like, I have seen this before. This is no ordinary gun. We're back in the car, and Dean is talking to John through the phone. He hangs up, and then he tells Sam to pull up to the next exit, and Sam goes, why? And he is clenching, you know, he he is holding tight to the steering wheel. He is obviously mad. Dean says because he caught the vampire's trail, and Sam says... How? And Dean says, well, he didn't say. Sam, like I said, obviously very pissed at this point, floors the gas. And he maneuvers it so that he stops in front of John and forces John to stop his monster truck. Uh, As they stop, Sam steps out of the car. And as John approaches him, 
Sam says, we need to talk about everything. Where are we going? What's the deal with the gun? And Dean, looking like the short king, <laughs> the shortest <laughs> king, honestly. Looking four nine. He tries to get in between Sam and John, who are like basically squaring up at each other. But both of them are ignoring him. Which, you know, I'm sure we don't need to unpack that. <laughs> well, they're not necessarily ignoring him because Dean's trying to break the fight up. And yeah. John says, your brother is right. Yeah, he he acknowledges Dean by saying, like, your brother is right. But the whole time, he's just yeah, staring down at, at Sam. Yeah, yeah, they're not looking at him. Uh, Sam continues on saying that, like, last time we were together, you said we are a danger to you. Now you need our help. So obviously something big is going on. And we want to know what. And John says, get back in the car. And Sam says, no. John says, I said, get back in the damn car. And Sam says, yeah. Yeah. And, and I said, no. I said, no. I will Go suck Sam! his dick. I will suck his <laughs> dick. I wrote down here, I will suck his dick. Also, like, at this point, I think I literally, like, had to pause the episode because I was literally, like, screaming and cheering and pumping my arms up and down and, like, jumping up and down in my seat. I love Sam so much. Oh, you were jumping up and down. Yeah. I was sobbing. I was sobbing. I I was crying so hard. Aww. It really got to me because, like, you know, seeing I've said this before, but every time I see Sam angry, how, how do you say it? Like, it's like self wish fulfillment. <laughs> like, right. I feel like that's kind of a part of what is going on with Sam's characterization. Like, you're supposed to be like, I wish I can talk to my parents like that. Like, <laughs> you yeah. know, right? So. So seeing Sam do it is like very emotional for me. So uh, after Sam says, yeah, and I said no, Dean interjects saying that Sam made his point and they're all tired. They can talk about this later. Sam recedes. Well, he doesn't recede. Dean literally like pushes him back towards the car. Yeah, I think so. I, d I don't mm -hmm. actually remember. <laughs> but yeah, I think mm -hmm. you're right. Uh, as Sam goes back to the car. He mumbles to himself, this is why I left in the first place. Go Sam! John hears him. John hears him and goes, what you say? What did you say? And Sam goes, oh, you heard me. And they're back to their screaming match. I John starts walking Sam's up. I Sam's dick and so much. <laughs> John, John starts walking up and pointing at Sam and shit. And he says, you left. Your brother and me? We needed you, but you walked away. You walked away. And you can hear Dean in the background. You can literally, like at this point, Dean is not in frame anymore, but like he's basically in the background going, it's not the vibe. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Despite Dean's pleas, Sam is full on shouting now. He shouts to John's face. Like you can, you can see the cold air coming out of his mouth yeah you can like says, see the spit like landing on john's yeah. face you know you know that like thing that k-pop stands say where they're like the rent was due when this performance was happening like the rent was due the day that they I, filmed this scene like the they were was like what the, like, the landlord to jared was like i need the money today and jared was like i will provide <laughs> <laughs> you don't know that joke? I don't. <laughs> the rent was due. That's pretty good. This literally isn't Jared, though. This is only Sam. I don't know who Jared is. Sam shouts to John's face. You're the one who closed the door, not me. You're the one who said, don't come back, Dad. You were just pissed off that you couldn't control me anymore. Go, Sam! Go, Sam. Go, Sam. <laughs> I was crying, though. <laughs> but, like, go, And I was Sam. screaming and cheering and also sucking his dick. Multitasking. Dean, at this point, physically interjects. And he tells them both to stop. Then looks towards at John and says, That means you too. Yeah, which I think is Dean's first moment of sort of talking back to John that we see, right? Yeah, and then, well, something I thought about in this scene was like, because when Dean was younger, like Sam was more of a responsibility 
mm-hmm. than a person. Like right. I feel like it's kind of it it kind of feels like that sometimes the way that now that Sam exists as a person for him because Sam is older and John right. is not around to tell him to take care of Sam all the time. Do you think this is the first time that J- Dean really took Sam's side? Because when they talk about Stanford fight, they they mention that Dean took John's side. So like, do you think like this is the first time he actually took Sam's side, like even just a little bit? And if so, like, Maybe. I wonder what that must feel like for Sam. I feel like yeah, if you're growing up with John, and like both of you are under his hand. And you don't really get to make any long-term friends at school because you're always moving around. Like, you want desperately for your big brother to be on your side. And he is when John's not around, but he's not when John is around. And, like, Sam's earlier, like, ugh, I told you so, look, after John insults the way Dean's been keeping them, Paula. Like, Sam just wants, like, for a time when, like, John's being a dick... Like, he just wants to look at Dean and roll his eyes and for Dean to roll his eyes back, you know? Like, he just wants someone who, like, also gets it. So I feel like this, yeah, no, this does have to feel a little bit good. But also, it might feel, like, too little too late to Sam. Like, John already kicked him out before. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, he was literally told to never come back. So, yeah, I mean, no wonder he didn't pick up Dean's calls in Stanford if John kicked him out and Dean said nothing. So, the camera stays on Dean as both John and Sam move to their respective cars. And then, while when that is over, Dean goes, terrific. And then that ends the scene. So, we're back to the vampires again. And Kate and Luther are fucking basically like luther's already shirtless they're making all these sounds at each other um and they're taking off kate's shirt it's very interesting the way that they use the vampire's sexuality in this episode yeah like okay first we have the makeout scene between kate and luther and the thing is it is not at all more explicit than say the sam sarah makeout scene but because of the camera work because of the dinginess and the lighting and the lack of background music um like you hear the mouth sounds instead of like beautiful floaty music and you're supposed to be like grossed out about like the rawness of it right yeah yeah. and then here too like the sex scene you're supposed to be really grossed out by it but it's not like fundamentally really different from any other sex scene we see in Supernatural, but just the lack of background music and the use of... They're not singing Take Me Back to Paradise, fill me again with your love. (laughs) Exactly. It's like, like, this sex is gross, maybe because it's more realistic, I guess, right? But, and also, I guess, well, okay, I guess it's about how after the Twilight Renaissance and such, like, vampires have become sexy and have also become sort of a metaphor for predatory sexuality. Is so this very... before or after Twilight? Uh, oh, shit! When was Twilight? I oh don't know. Was this before Let... Twilight? Let me look. Okay, Twilight was written in 2005. So this was probably, like, yeah. during, like, during, like, the Twilight hype. But they might have written this episode before the twilight hype yeah i can't tell i'm not sure though i'm sure there were other things that made vampires like a sexuality metaphor that led to twilight but yeah you're sure (laughs) i this is not like i'm sure that twilight was not the first time vampires were sexy in all of literature like there's carmilla yeah 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 i guess my point here basically is that later this is homophobic the way that they established so early that, like, vampires are sexual and it's disgusting. Like, it's all, like, leading up to the first lesbian kiss in Supernatural, which is, like, sexual assault that is, like, literally predatory and literally forcing, like, dirty blood inside of you, which also, like, feels like, I don't know, like, uncomfortably 
like seraphobic in terms of like AIDS and stuff too. So yeah. Anyway, mm-hmm. that's my point. We'll get to that when that happens. Yeah, so they're getting it on and then Luther turns to Kate or sorry, I keep getting Kate and Jenny's names mixed up. Okay, Luther turns to Jenny and says, You like to watch? Me too. And then he asks Kate, Are you ready, baby? Jenny is asking if they're gonna kill her. And Kate says, I'm going to take you so high, you're never going to come down. So, in this, this is like a very, like, erotic sequence where Mm -hmm. Luther cuts Kate's arm with his knife and she sucks the blood out of her arm and then she goes to Jenny and well sexually assaults her by kissing her and forcing blood into her mouth as Luther washes um and he says welcome home baby so let's let's unpack this oh wait oh also we can see Luther's tattoo while he's shirtless and it's in kanji, right? Um, but I, I tried to, like, Google Translate it, and I didn't end up with any actual words. But I guess it reads, like, Neora Yote, but I, I don't know what that means. It might just be mm. nonsense the way most Japanese tattoos on white tattoos people are. are. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> back to this. The fact that Luther has to say, like, you like to watch, so do I before this. So, like... It's a lesbian kiss, right? But they have to put two disclaimers on it. Disclaimer one is, this is an evil vampire doing evil things to get blood into Jenny's mouth. And the second thing is, and also it's just to sexually titillate a straight man. So don't worry, no one here is gay, even a little bit. Oh, I think I also remember seeing a Tumblr post that, like, Kate About in this nails. episode- Yeah, exactly! She has one hand with normal nails and one hand with, like, French tips, and every time she's kissing Jenny, like, it's the hand with the French tips that's in shot, just to make the scene even more straight and homophobic. It's a bad scene to watch. Right. Like, it just- it didn't have to be a kiss. Like, it so obviously didn't have to be a kiss, but- Yeah, um, okay, but- okay, this isn't, like, about this specifically, but okay, it's such a deliberate action to turn someone into a vampire. Like, it's gotta be awkward around the nest for a bit afterwards, right? Like, how do you go from this to, like, Jenny becoming a part of the nest like, in the next scene that we see her. Right, it's like, you killed my boyfriend and sexually assaulted me, but I guess I'm on your side now, guys. Like, what? I, I, like, the only assumption you can make is that it also changes her, like, mentality. Like, it does something to her mentally. And, mm-hmm. and then we come to the part where it's like, so being a vampire means you're automatically evil? mm but not if you're Benny. <laughs> not if you're Benny. Because yeah. that's, that's the direction your mind goes to, right? Like, right. when she became a vampire, she automatically became evil because of the vampire blood. And right. that's why she's part of the pack. But, like, that's we know from bad. future seasons, that's not true. And also, right. it's just fundamentally, like, oh, uh, no. <laughs> bad take. <laughs> like, it's fundamentally yeah. a bad take. Um, so, it's the next day. Or, sorry, no, Luther is opening the barn door and getting another vampire to come in. Meanwhile, Dean, John, and Sam are hiding behind some trees, scoping out the nest, and we get that the vampires aren't afraid of the sun, but direct sunlight does hurt. However, the only way to kill a vampire is with beheading. John also says that they sleep during the day, but they could still wake up. Um, Dean says, so I guess walking right in is not our best option, and John says, actually, that's the plan. You're not a good hunter, John. We get a scene of Sam and Dean getting weapons from the Paul's trunk, um, while John- John opens his fucking racist trunk, and there's, like, this 
automatic compartment that slides out from the truck. You draw. So you queen. agree that it's funny, right? Like it is yeah. funny, right? It is. I funny. was dying laughing. I was I was so fucking amused by this, and I was like, "Is my is my happiness just does it have such a low barrier that I find this so funny?" But like, yeah, it is funny. Yeah, like okay, we get it. John's so cool. The way John is standing beside it too, it's like okay, yeah. like he's like he's like a brooding, right? He's like. <laughs> Standing around like, mm, and then yeah, the no. car opens. Like John after Mary's like, death, oh like God. broodingly building together this cool, like, like this cool gadgety hidden compartment in his trunk. Like, okay, we get it, John. Dean tells John that they've got an extra machete if he needs one, um, which is obviously another in for the director to make John seem cool because he pulls out like this giant machete out of a leather holder from his fancy little gadget gadget trunk and then yeah, he's John's... like no I think I'm good and it's like fuck yeah. you John <laughs> like come on John Ugh. do you think John also thinks of himself as an action hero god I he probably thinks of himself bet. as John Wick yeah <laughs> He cannot ride a horse. <laughs> this is my this is my truth. Oh is yeah, I John think that any Winchester horse would sense John's shitty energy and like throw him off his their back. After that, John says, "So you boys really want to know about this cult?" Which I I got a little emo about that he was finally telling them something. I was like, "Oh, maybe Sam got through to him a bit." Oh, uh, but I think it's just because they need to know the information now so that they work harder to get the gun. But, you know, maybe. Maybe. I, I hate John, but I am, like, desperately grasping at any chance that he may change because I think Sam deserves that before John dies. But I also know in, like, three episodes, John tells Dean to kill Sam, so I'm not banking <laughs> on any hope. So... Um, yeah, and Sam says in response to the question, yes, sir, which is, like, head in my hands, head in my hands, because yeah. I feel like for Sam, it's like, he feels like, oh, like, maybe John's meeting me halfway, I'll meet him halfway, too, by, like, showing him the respect that he demands of me. Like, and kids shouldn't have to meet their parents halfway, but for Sam, it has to feel like something that John seems to be taking Sam's words to heart, right? Because like I, I think like I mentioned in the Bugs episode, I always felt like the reason that Sam was always the one who was fighting John is because he felt that eventually he'd be able to convince John to change. And this is a moment yeah. when Sam's like, maybe I convinced John to change. Oh, this is the thing I'm sensitive about. Okay, so John talks about the cult and we get like some little flashbacks. Um, So he says that, Back in 1835, the night that the Alamo happened, some guy named Samuel Colt made a special gun for a hunter, a man like us, only on horseback. <laughs> Alright, um, and apparently he made 13 bullets, um, but six of the bullets got used already. The gun can apparently kill anything. During the scenes where they're making the gun, like, this guy's, like, melting a spoon over a fire, and I was like, are you doing heroin, bro? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Dean says, kill anything, like, supernatural anything? And Sam says, like, realizing, like, the demon. And John says, yeah, like the demon. So, if they find the gun, they may be able to destroy it. So, Sam, Dean, and John go inside the barn the vampires are all sleeping and the three winchesters dean almost wakes someone up and john sneaks into the room where the main vampire couple is and you know this all of this is happening simultaneously it's a blast and then sam finds the lady that has been fed blood. I don't even say Jenny anywhere in my notes because I was like, it's just a lady. <laughs> Literally, it's just a lady. He starts untying her and when he does, she wakes up and starts 
screaming, but screaming in a way that suggests she is not human anymore. Um, oh, but before that happens, Dean sees that there's, like, locked area where there are a bunch of people tied up mm. um, who are being bled to feed the vampires, and he starts trying to break the lock. Yeah. What, where does that plot line lead? Um, during the big action scene near the end, uh, when they're, like, he lets clearing them out. out the nest, yeah, Dean, like, comes over and he's like, I told you guys I would come back, and then he lets them all out, which was kind of yeah. nice. I guess because we didn't see the people, yeah, so I was like... Yeah, we didn't see like... any of their faces, so it's not, like, really a big thing. Yeah, but I don't know, yeah, I thought it was sweet. <laughs> But also that, I guess that's like a fucking parallel to the last vampire episode. I don't fucking know. I don't fucking care. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> the finale is not real. So uh, that happens and Jenny screams and then everybody, all the vampires wake up because of the scream. So John is stuck in the room with the main vampire couple. He gets knocked out and then he screams at Sam and Dean to leave. He also throws a bottle at the window of the barn. So it breaks and sunlight starts streaming into the room. And the couple is shirtless, so it's like they're gonna get burned. Mm. So that's how we assume he got out. Because the the two were a bit vulnerable because of the sun. So Sam and Dean run, and they wait for John. Who yeah. for a while we think was not gonna arrive, but he yeah, eventually Dean arrives. Dean is yelling Boo. like, "Dad, Dad!" And I think I wrote it. It's me, boys. I'm the Crystal Babpod speaking to you inside your brain. Listen to me, <laughs> boys. Leave John. We don't need him. <laughs> Literally, we don't need him. And then uh, John follows them. Right? He ends mm-hmm. up where they are, and then he says that the vampires won't attack until night. And once they catch your scent, it's for life. Dean asks what they should do in the meantime. And John says, you go to a funeral home. That's what. You traumatic bitch. This is why Sam hates you, John. Like, just say what you mean. Just be straight up, bro. Just be yourself. (laughs) Uh, So we cut to the motel room where Sam and John are. And they both look really awkward, like they hate being stuck in a room alone. Uh, Sam's like, it shouldn't be taking this long, I should go help. Like, clearly just trying to get out of here. But John (laughs) says, Dean's got it. Okay, and then we get a conversation which made me, like, a John apologist for half a second before I came back to my senses. But, okay, basically, John says, Sammy. And Sam says, yeah. And John says, I don't think I ever told you this. You don't tell Sam a lot of things, John. (laughs) I don't think I ever told you this, but the day you were born, do you know what I did? And he says, I put a hundred bucks into a savings account for you. I did the same thing for your brother. It was a college fund. And every month, I put in another hundred dollars until... Do you think the until was until Mary died? Yeah. Or... Yeah, okay. So, no, as soon as Mary died, he was like, yoink, never mind. (laughs) Yeah, okay. This bitch is not going to college, bro. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He literally said that. He, I I was quoting him when I said that. And then he flung, yeah, he flung Sam across the room into a waste basket while (laughs) saying that. So, he says, anyway, my point is, Sam, this is never the life that I wanted for you. Well, duh, you didn't even know that this was a life available to him until dot dot dot. Sam says, then why didn't, why'd you get so mad when I left? And John says, you gotta understand something. After your mother passed, all I saw was evil everywhere. All I cared about was keeping you boys alive. I wanted you prepared, ready, except somewhere along the line, I, I stopped being your father and I became your, your drill sergeant. I'm glad that you're aware, now do something about it, bitch! Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about how John is a good father, actually, this is the scene that they quote. Are, are John, like the fact yeah. that he 
sacrifices his life for Dean. So those two, like he apologizes, so that's a sign of being good. And uh, he sacrifices his life, so that's a sign that he was a good dad. Like, first off, no. Second of all, in three episodes, he tells Dean to kill Sam. That's true, but also, like, I just want to put it forward here that sometimes just because you apologize doesn't mean (laughs) like you're automatically good. Like, it was years of neglect, and it was years... Of Sam thinking that his father didn't want him. And it was like... Yeah, he kicked him out. Sam and Dean don't need to forgive John for these things. And they they do. But, like, I don't, you know? (laughs) Like, I don't forgive John. So, uh, I don't know. Like, again, like, I, I, you know, I, I was the person who said in Bugs that... Uh, I understand John apologists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And like in a way, I still do. Through this rewatch, I'm less able to understand John apologists, but I'm just putting the thought out there that like yeah. that's my take on that. I agree fully because he says like afterwards when you said that you wanted to go away to school, my only thought was that you were going to be alone, vulnerable. So, okay, if you didn't want Sam to be alone and vulnerable when he went away to school, you do not kick him out! Yeah, why kick him out? Like, be there, be supportive, be there for him. Right, and we find out in Bugs that apparently, like, when he was worried about Sam, he would, like, drive by Stanford and fucking spy on him like a creep. That is not the way to go! When you're afraid that your son's gonna be alone and vulnerable at college. Like, you don't kick him out and you, like, try to maintain a relationship with him and you, like, call him to check in. He says, It just never occurred to me what you wanted. I just couldn't accept the fact that you and me were just different. Um, and Sam laughs and he says, We're not different. Not anymore. With what happened to Mom and Jess, we probably have a lot more in common than just about anyone. What are your thoughts on this line? People like to say that Sam is like John. (laughs) I hear that a lot, especially in the Dean circles, surprisingly. For, you know, that post that like, uh, if you have a Sam or Cass profile picture, I do not care about a anything that you have to say about Dean. Like, that's kind of how I feel about Dean girls talking about Sam. No, literal! This isn't like, about you, Ellie! We love you, Ellie! Ellie, we love you. <laughs> but, like, if you have a Dean BFP, shut the fuck up about Sam. And, like, I, I get that, like, at the beginning of Supernatural, like... Yeah, they draw clear parallels between yeah. Sam seeking revenge after Jess's death and John seeking revenge after Mary's death. But the different thing is that Sam's not a fucking dick about it. Yeah, but also, you know how earlier when you said, like, no wonder Sam is so angry at John for being not straight up a bro when he's explaining Hunt things? Like, I was thinking about all the times that we called Sam a dramatic bitch for drawing out, like, a realization about a hunt, like, over several questions. Uh, But, like, that's not the same thing. Like, I I, I get if Sam got a little bit of drama from the way that John talks, but overall, Sam's a little lore boy who explains things, so they're not the same. John says, I guess you're right, son. And then Sam says, hey, dad, whatever happened to that college fund? And John says, spent it on ammo. And then he and Sam start laughing. Boo. The way Sam laughs, too, I was like, this is not even Sam. (laughs) You know how I feel about Sam laughing. (laughs) Okay, most of the times when Sam laughs, it's Sam This time, yeah, it wasn't. Isn't it just so representative of John's entire thing that he blew Sam and Dean's college money 
on buying ammo. Like that, like that, if I needed a one sentence summary of John Winchester, like it would be that. Yeah, so Dean finally shows up and he got a bottle of blood from the funeral home. Uh, he hands it to John and John says, you know what to do. You know what to do. And apparently what to do is uh, the next scene. We see Dean uh, leaning over a car hood. Yeah, flat, flat ass popped. <laughs> yeah, he is meant to be a pretty boy in this scene. Yeah. And by meant to be, I mean like not for us, but for Kate, who comes in and asks if Dean is having car trouble. She says, "You know, I can give you a lift, get get you back to my place, and shit like that." And Dean turns to her and says, I'll pass. I usually draw the line at necrophilia. And the woman hits him. And he falls to the ground. So, uh, <laughs> she lifts him up. Like, by grabbing his cheeks. And Dean, at this point, is still cracking jokes. He's saying that, like, oh, I don't get this friendly till the second date. You know, Dean. Yeah. She says... Uh, you know, we could still have some fun. Like, I like making new friends. And then she kisses Dean. Yay, more sexual assault. Yeah, yeah it's not fun to watch. And, okay, after she pulls away, he says, like, I don't normally stay with a girl for that long. Definitely not eternity. And suddenly, Kate and the vampire that is standing behind her uh, gets shot with some arrows, darts. I don't know what these yeah. are called. They're like little small darts from uh, what the weird shooter thing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't fucking know. Um, a bow and arrow. Yeah, but like the bow is weird. What do you uh, call that kind of bow? I think it is just a bow, right? It's just like modern day bows often look pretty high tech. A uh, crossbow? Yeah, yeah. I think wait, it's called wait, a crossbow. Wait, did it in Bugs? Didn't Sam yeah. say he yeah, wanted Sam to learn said, soccer yeah. instead of crossbow hunting? And now he and John are crossbow hunting together. Oh, head in my hands. Also, like, we're assuming that Sam and John have been, like, waiting this whole time, right? So, like, they let Dean be sexually assaulted before shooting? <laughs> yeah. Great. I don't, yeah. Great. And also okay. the fact that John was like, you know what to do, yeah, implying and, that yeah, this like, is go something be that a they pretty usually boy do. And get sexually assaulted by vampires so we can shoot them? Like, come on. Sam and John come out of the trees. Hashtag coming out. <laughs> <laughs> right, John says, you know, me and Danny Elkins, we went way back <laughs> and... We knew each other real well, if you know what I mean. John tells the vampire that the arrow is soaked in dead man's blood, which is like poison to the vampires. Kate collapses, and as Sam and Dean take her away, John slices the head of the remaining guy, and then we cut to yeah. black. I think it probably does matter that the remaining guy is the only black vampire and he's the first one who's killed and treated as completely disposable. Oh, is the other, is one of the vampires Filipino? Oh, I don't know. You could look up the actors. Oh, wait, but you can't because if you go on the IMDb page, you'll see the, the score. Oh, yeah. So we can't. Anyway. So we can't look it up. But, like, I thought one of the actors was Filipino. The one who played dead. Oh. But also, like, Filipino traits is such a nebulous thing. Like, who? what even... What do Filipinos even look like? I have no fucking idea. We have blood from everywhere. That makes sense for a vampire. <laughs> Grey vampire confirmed. Yeah. <laughs> Sam, Dean, and John are crouched around a campfire, uh, and he's giving them stuff to throw on the fire, which smells strongly so that it'll block all of their scents from the vampires. You know how, like, in most Supernatural episodes, I point out that the exposition feels very forced? 
Um, yeah. I feel like they did a good job with the exposition in this episode because, like, well, I mean, they created a situation where Sam and Dean don't know about vampires, so they would need to be explained to. And second, the fact that most of the exposition comes in the second half of the episode also serves as a good, like, like character nod. Oh, look, like, maybe John is changing. Maybe he is explaining some things, because, like, earlier he probably would have been, like, just put this on the fire and then not say anything else, you know? So, uh, he's saying that- he says vampires mate for life, so Luther's definitely gonna come after them, and that Kate means more to him than the gun. Okay, what does vampires mate for life mean? Like, you're not allowed to have breakups? I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Cause, like, humans don't mate for life, like, they get divorced! Also, for life is eternity. <laughs> yeah, exactly! Like, you can't break up. Like, what if your, like, vampire partner, like, starts watching Supernatural? Like, you can't break up with them? (laughs) So, uh, he's saying that they don't have a lot of time, and he tells Sam and Dean to get out of here. Dean says, you can't take care of all of them yourself, but John says, I'll have Kate and the Colt. Uh, well, he says her. I don't think he ever uses her name, but they probably don't know her name. Yeah, but Sam says, after, we're gonna meet up, right? Use the gun together, right? John doesn't reply, and Sam realizes, oh, you're leaving again. You still want to go after the demon alone. And he says, you know, I don't get you. You can't treat us like this. Immediately, the fact that he says, I don't get you, immediately after they had that bonding moment. Uh, Yeah. We get each other. Yeah, and now like, it's we're back like to I don't other. get you. Yeah, no, exactly. Right. So like that one conversation cannot fit a lifetime of neglect, basically. Like Sam got a moment where he felt close to John, but like now it's back to this shit. Yeah, and Sam says, like, children. John says, You are my children. I'm trying to keep you safe. And then and then And then, and then <laughs> Dean says Dad all due respect, but, uh, that's a bunch of crap. Go, Dean! Yes! Go, Dean! Go, Dean! Go, Dean! Dean. I, I will suck your dick. When I, yeah, what I said to you, I'll even suck Dean's dick. I will not, because, again, I am Asian, but for a second, I forgot. Not that I, I was Asian, that I forgot Asian. about Dean's, Dean's Asian fetish. <laughs> Uh, the fact that he calls John out that, like, you send us on haunts. Like, yeah. that's not keeping us safe. Like, that's yeah. what we've been saying. That's literally like, what we've been saying. And Dean is aware. Like, yeah. he knows that D- John is being a hypocrite. And the fact that now he's standing up for himself is like, yes, go boy. After, yeah. what, 27 years? My right. God. Yeah. Oh, right, it's been a year. He's 27, dude. Aww. He's literally 27, dude. Aw, and Sam's probably 23. Ugh. Babies. Okay, but yeah. Time flies when you're doing a podcast, podcast. called Bus Station Beauties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the saying. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, Dean calls John out by saying, like, you know what Sammy and I have been hunting. Hell, you sent us on a few hunting trips yourself. And the fact that this happens, like, so soon after something wicked, like, go, Dean. Go, Dean. (sighs) Ah, go, Dean. Um, so he says, you can't be that worried about keeping us safe. Oh, so good. And John says, it's not the same thing. And Dean asks, then what is it? John says, like, this demon is a bad son of a bitch. I can't make the same moves if I'm worried about keeping you safe. Dean says, you mean you can't be as reckless. And John says, look, I don't expect to make it out of this fight in one piece. Your mother's death, it almost killed me. I can't watch my children die too. I won't. Did this remind you of Sam's last episode, the pain that I felt I can never feel that again? Actually, it did not. Only now that you pointed it out, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. But, I mean, like, it's generic enough to say that, like, I won't let my kids die. That it yeah. doesn't feel as connected to me. That's true. And then Dean says, and, like, his voice is kind of breaking. He's like, what happens if you die? 
Dad, what happens if you die? And we could have done something about it. Oh, he's just a little boy. <laughs> he's just a little birthday boy. <laughs> because knowing that what we know of Dean, that he just wants his family together. Like, yeah. I can't help but wonder, especially later on, right? Like John says, I'm not expecting to make it out of here in one piece. Like, yeah, I feel like he wants to go with John and Sam. Like, partly so that they all make it out alive, but I think also because if they die, he wants them to die together. Like, I feel like that Dean's fucked up enough to be of that mindset. He says, I think maybe Sammy's right about this one. We should do this. Oh, he said, you know I've been thinking. I think maybe Sammy's right about this one. We should do this together. Which, the you know I've been thinking, I think, is quite good because it shows a lot of the behind-the-scenes Dean stuff that led up to this moment of him standing up to John. Like, this whole episode yeah. when he was, like, telling Sam to cool it, like, he was still, like, internally doubting. But I guess Sam, being, like, righteously angry, helped him get to this point. Go, Sam. And then Dean says, we're stronger as a family, Dad. We just are. You know it. Which is a nice line, but, like, how do you get there from Shadow? I don't know. Do you think it's true, though? They, I guess they probably used to hunt together, right? So maybe he's drawing on that? But I don't know. Do you think he's just making it up so that he can go with John? I don't know. It just... I didn't really feel that there was enough lead-up to, like, me believing that line. It's just I don't believe it whichever way. I don't believe Dean when he said, like, John is weaker with us. And I don't believe, really, this time when it is said that they're stronger together. Because, like, I just haven't seen enough evidence yeah, of it, I exactly. guess, of whatever the two is trying to imply. Yeah. So it's like, who knows? Who knows? Well, we won't find out, probably. Or actually, well, what we'll find out is that they're weaker together because Sam didn't even shoot John as John Azazel. Hashtag Sam crit. <laughs> John, in response to the little birthday boy, says, We're running out of time. You do your job and you get out of the area. That's an order. Die. Die, John. The fact that he reverts immediately back to that's an order so fast. Oh, yeah, no, but right after the, like, I wasn't your father, I was a drill sergeant, sorry, and then, like, just goes right back to being a drill sergeant, like, okay. And I get that he's trying to keep them safe, and he's, like, in the past they listened to me before, when I was, like, shitty and drill sergeant-y to them, but, like, come on, dude, come on. Sorry to bring up succession, but it reminded me of that, like, one line that Roman says, like, Logan asks him, like, what can you bring to the table? Oh, and yeah. And Roman says, like, I don't know, fucking love. And it's like, sometimes, like, I wonder, like, can't you just bring love to this table, John? <laughs> like, can't yeah. you be, like, I'm asking you, not as an order, but, like, as your father. As a request from father to sons. Like, but no, it doesn't yeah. happen. He is still a drill sergeant, even though he expressed remorse for turning out this way. It, it doesn't matter. He's still the same. Yeah, he's aware of exactly how bad he is, and he's decided that, like, the ends justify the means. Ugh. So, there's a plan happening. Or, no, there's not a plan happening, because later John says, you disobeyed my orders. Okay, well, John has a plan. Cut this all out. Okay, so we're still the vampire nest, where Luther is waiting, and other vampires report back to him that they killed Frank and took Kate. They hear a car, and Luther smells Kate's scent in that truck. It's John's racist truck. John's driving with Kate in the front. He sees the vampires tailing him. Meanwhile, at the vampire nest, Dean shows up. Uh, he scares the vampire by saying boo and beheads him. And then, yeah, he gets to the people locked in and he says, I told you I'd come back and he lets them out, which I thought was cute. Um, yeah. And yeah, and I think it's nice that Dean, 
has this job. I don't know, because, like, I feel like Sam usually gets the job of, like, getting, like, civilians out. So, like, yeah, at least, at least Dean gets, gets his turn. And Sam can be, like, a little action hero boy. So, uh, Luther has blocked off John's racist truck and tells John to get out. They talk. Dean and Sam are apparently cleaning out Luther's nest, and Kate is in the truck. When Luther asks where Kate is, John says, Come here, sweetheart, and then pulls her out, which is like, oh, come on, bro. And she's all tied up, too, so it's like, yeah. not a good visual. It's not. Um, yeah, but I'm not gonna make a John misogyny tally, because he's only here for, like, two more episodes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he holds a knife to Kate's throat. Kate tells Luther about the dead man's blood. So John says, I'll trade you, your girl, for the cult, basically. So Luther agrees to the trade. And John has him put the cult down, asks him to back up. John holds on to Kate as he leans down to pick up the gun. But then Luther says... It's a nice move. You almost made it. And then Kate knocks John out. There's a fight scene. John's, like, car gets super smashed uh, when Luther, like, punches him into it. Uh, But then one of the vampires is shot by an arrow. And Sam and Dean were hiding in the trees the whole time, even though they were told to stay back. Uh, And they go around shooting people, and then Sam tries to get Luther, but then Luther, like, grabs Sam's throat. Uh, Dean is, yeah, and he tells Dean, like, don't shoot me. I'm gonna break his neck. Yep. Poor Sam. (laughs) Um, Dean drops the machete, and then Luther says, you people, why can't you leave us alone? We have as much right to live as you do. Which is another line spoken by Luther in this episode that I think Supernatural should take to heart. But, okay, because this is immediately followed by John saying, I don't think so, and then shooting Luther, right? It's a really <laughs> yeah. weird moment because, like, in any other show, I think we would, we're would supposed to take that line at face value. But in this show, I think with John's response... Like, they expected the audience to go, like, haha, like, no you don't, like, what a stupid thing to say, you monster, you know? Also, like, it is a stupid thing for this monster to say, because they are hurting people. We deserve to live as much as you, like, so do the people you kill deserve to die? Like, what's going on? So, the fact that they have this kind of villain says it feels so out of place. Maybe they are starting to build onto something here that they never quite, you know, fulfill. Right. But even as build-up, it sucks. Yeah, I agree. It's just a weird line. Like, I feel like you don't write a line like this unless it's supposed to be meaningful, but they treat it very unmeaningfully. John says, I don't think so, because he's a little action hero boy. Um, and he thinks he's John Wick, uh, and he shoots Luther between the eyes. The way it's shot, the, the as in the camera work, mm. it's like something that they do every time. I think every time. Oh yeah, every Not time. Not sure if every single shot. time, but like uh, in the early seasons, at the very least, like every time the gun, every time the Colt is fired, they do that camera work. The most prominent one is Dean's, because that's, I don't know, in AMVs a lot, I guess. And it it's is. the one that looks the most visually appealing. But Well, I think the one that looks the most visually appealing is when Eileen shoots the cult. <laughs> but that's not because of the camera work. Wait, how many people shoot the cult? I don't know. Does Cass ever sh- shoot the cult? I don't think Cass really... Use oh. guns very often, right? 
Except for that one scene where he uses a gun. No, 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 no. Cass shoots the cult, but misses. No! No! No, he didn't. He didn't. He did not. He did not. I love... I love this little gay guy. (laughs) He's literally... I feel like that's, like, code in Supernatural for gay. His, his wrist is too limp to aim. I love him so much. Also, again, to be clear again, we are members of the queer community, so this is okay. Wrist literally too limp to shoot. <laughs> I'm not sure, though, if that's true. I just, I'm scrolling through the Super Wiki. I, I mean, I guess it's true. It's on the Super Wiki. But, like, yeah. if, if, if this turns out to be false... Don't blame me. Blame whoever yeah. is the Winces shipper in the Super Wiki community. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> uh, should I tell this in the podcast? Or are we gonna make what, enemies? What, the fact that, that, we've, that we're that we like mutuals yeah. on Twitter with well, Super Wiki? Like, we Wiki. used to follow Wincesty. Super Wiki on Twitter. And then they revealed themselves to be a Wincesty and I got freaked so bad. Anyway. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. We're way off course. Um, so yeah. So John shoots Luther, and it's a whole thing. Like there's like a sigil like that appears in his head. Like his skeleton shows up. He like falls down. There's like flashes of light going through. There's like this big like charcoaly hole in his head. Kate's like crying out, Luther, and then. She starts running at John, but then I'm pretty sure this is Jenny. Like, another vampire that's with her who, yeah, I think is Jenny, um, grabs her and is like, no, bro, like, he's gonna shoot us, and pulls her into the car, and they ride off. Do they just, is the bullet still there, or does it disappear after you shoot it? Because, like, now there are only five left unless they went back and dug it out of Luther's brain, right? No, I think they make more bullets, don't they? Okay, so in the motel, uh, Sam and Dean are packing up and John is by the door and he goes up to the boys and he says, Hey, boys. <laughs> like, <laughs> every, time, every time he says, Hey, boys, all I can think of is like the number of people who also say, Hey, boys in Supernatural. Yeah. So there's Meg, Billy, Crowley. I think Rowena does it too. Uh, Sam says, yes, sir, yet again. Which, because he brought it up, just makes me think of the, like, meeting in the middle thing. But also yeah. maybe, uh, like, it's it's like a way to combat the fact that Dean, uh, that John may be angry because they f- yeah, didn't I follow agree. an order. Yeah, I think in this case, that's what it is. Yeah. John says, like, you ignored a direct order there. And Sam says, yes, sir. And then Dean, <laughs> Dean goes, Dean. yeah, but we saved your ass. Go, Dean. Oh. Dean. Go, Dean. D- <laughs> and then Sam looks at Dean like a bit uncomfortably. But Dean is just looking at John and he's clenching his jaw. And he is obviously standing his ground. John says, you're right. Dean says, I am. John continues, he says, like, it scares the hell out of me. You two are all I got, but I guess we are stronger as a family. So we go after this damn thing together. Sam and Dean say, yes, sir. And that's the end of the episode. What was the song that was playing over there? The song that's playing here is the song that plays at the end of every single episode, like in the credits. Oh, okay. I usually leave before then. I also did, leave. Did it start earlier? No, it, they just put it in there and then they like repeated it again at the end. The the oh. only reason I know this is because I, <laughs> sorry, but I listened to um the supernatural soundtrack. Yes, <laughs> it's so funny. There's there's one soundtrack there that's literally called Sa- Salmon Dean. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. good. Yeah, and Dean in the Heartland. <laughs> Thank you, Jay Gruska. Yeah. Blood blood drops keep falling on my head. <laughs> <laughs> this 
one is called, called Gratuitous Sex and Violence. <laughs> the Meat Suit Mambo. Uh, this this is the song. Uh, end credits and Mo guitar riffs. So, it's that one. Mm. Got it. Yeah. 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 And then the famous Americana, of course, which I have listened right. to endlessly. One time I asked an ex to play that for me in the piano because she was a pianist. And she Aww. was like, no, it's too boring. <laughs> Boo. And that's why your ex is. <laughs> that's literally why she's my ex. <laughs> Anyway, so what did you think about this episode? Um, I had issues with the vampires, but I thought that all of the John stuff with Sam and Dean was extremely good. Yeah, the character stuff is really good, but I guess the the way they were planning this out to be, like, this is the first time we so- we have seen a pack of monsters because all the monsters prior are individual people or individual creatures this one is the first one that's like part of a society in a way right and it makes it so much more threatening like it makes it Mm. creepier it makes it darker and i don't know if i actually really like the that kind of dark vibe I, you've mentioned this in like private with me, but um, like Kripke era is defined by that kind of grittiness, right? Right. And the reality of the situation is, I don't think I'm just that much of a Kripke fan. Mm. So yeah, Kripke yeah. era, I mean. But yeah, yeah. So this is like very Kripke era, right? Like this this episode could not exist in any other era of supernatural. I don't know the fact that it's like it can be defined as that and I don't like the definition is like I mean I enjoyed it because of the brother and the family moments but yeah. otherwise I didn't like that it was so upsetting. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I like I I'm looking forward to John dying but I'm also going to miss him because I feel like all the episodes of Supernatural that I really like, it's because I'm feeling things about, like, John and Dean or John and Sam. So, like, once that's gone, I have to wait so long before Cass shows up and I can find the new thing I care about. The thing with John is, much like Mary, uh, the specter of him is present in Supernatural. You know that joke that, like, you know when the episode is gonna have John as a prominent looming figure when Dean wears his leather jacket? <laughs> like, <laughs> that is literally true, though. Like, it's shorthand for, like, John's gonna be in this episode. Mm. But, yeah. Uh, like, I think John, you know, dies, but he doesn't leave. Like, yeah, the daddy issues, which I'm assuming is what you're talking about, that you like is like around gonna be around right yeah so uh yeah. best line worst line what's your best um, line my best line is when john says i said get back in the damn car and sam said yeah and i said no God, i will literally so suck good. his dick <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. i i would go for the that general fight um but mm-hmm. specifically, Sam saying, you were just pissed off. You couldn't control me anymore. Because yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> and also, it like, it is such a good insight on the fight, right? Like, mm-hmm. Sam does think that he was under it. And, like, he, he was. But, like, yes, it's a nice insight on, like, what Sam thinks about the fight and why it happened and you know much like everything there's a side to whatever and if if john really was just pissed that like uh sam isn't following orders anymore like that's not for that's for john to decide you know but the Mm -hmm. fact that that's what sam thinks is very telling of their relationship prior to that fight worst line what's your worst line you like to wash, so do I. 
Boo. Boo. Uh, I don't know what my worst line is. I can I just do you <laughs> do you <laughs> no? Can I just do your line? <laughs> Well, we're already pregnant. <laughs> but okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead. Yeah, that that line because it's just I mean, like I get that like these people are evil, so it's like you know, their actions are supposed to be evil, but the framing and uh mm-hmm. uh like it is like a homophobic thing to do yep. that especially because it's not like they do much lesbian kissing in supernatural especially in the right. early seasons right do we get any well we get charlie and gilda is that it we get some charlie stuff i don't think it's just charlie and gilda i'm not sure if charlie kisses any other women but she yeah, is involved like with other seen women more gift sets we have that if... one girl who has the death touch, but that's just a mention. Well, but she doesn't kiss anyone yeah, or else they would be dead. They would die. Yeah. Not sure if there's... Oh, there's the teenage Lebanon girls. Yeah, but they don't kiss. The camera cuts away as they start... Oh, no, they start leaning in and their friend's like, you guys are so gross. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think which is not homophobic two... because that guy is yeah, which is gay. not homophobic <laughs> in that case. Yeah, that's just teenagers. Yeah, no, I feel like probably the only two lesbian kisses in Supernatural are like this and Charlie and Gilda. So that's which not the, the, great. they also do a point of Sam and Dean being like live slug yeah. reacting. Yeah, <laughs> <to> <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally live slug reacting all over the place. I mean, I think Sam was normal. They were zooming in on Dean's live slug reaction. I am DB rating. I feel like this is probably around, like, home in terms of, like, character stuff. But I don't really know how people would take the case, given that it is sort of different from the ones before. Yeah, it's um, so much. Yeah... And maybe, you know what, I have a theory that people voted yeah. this down after the finale. Oh, I'm not sure if it's true, but I have a feeling. Oh, because of Jenny. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then in that case, 8.4? Damn, 8.4? That's so low. I mean, I think it should be higher, but like, I feel like if people are voting it down... Hmm. Actually, I don't know if people were, were powerful enough to vote it down that much. Hmm. 8.6? 8.6. Okay. I'll go 8.9. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, fuck. What? It's so much lower than Provenance. Because Provenance what? is 8.7. And this one uh-huh. is an 8.5. Oh. What did people like about Provenance so much? I, I maybe don't it's know. just eight point five because of Jenny. Yeah, maybe so. Let's check the user reviews. Oh, also, did you want to check if that vampire was Filipino? Let's let's check if the vampire is Filipino. Actually, he's uh, uh, he's Italian. He's Italian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Italians <laughs> like spicy white, right? <laughs> Still, that's so fucking funny. <laughs> this guy just looked like a little bit of a mestizo Filipino, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Italians are POC. <laughs> no! 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 I mean, like, there are Italian people who are people of color, but being ethnically Italian does not make you a person of color. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> This is this is this is how we're gonna get cancelled, by the way. Like me mistaking <laughs> an Italian guy as Filipino. <laughs> oh, when Cass shows up and I start Asian cast truthing, like while <laughs> looking at his face on my screen, that's when we start getting cancelled. Okay, let's look at the reviews. This one called out the anti stereotypical vampires. No! This person said that that the vampires are cool, but the script focuses too much on the troubled relationship between John and Sam. <laughs> no. What's wrong with you? 
The legend behind the cult is easily the highlight of the episode. You thought Samuel's meth lab was the highlight of the episode, bro? Uh, this one says, like, watch The Lost Boys and Near Dark, and you will get a kick out of the two movies if you like this episode. Okay, so let's not watch The Lost Boys and Near Dark. Didn't we in the Discord watch Lost Boys? Well, I didn't, but I know that there was a movie night about that because Dean references it. Well, Jack references it as something Dean likes. But like, Aww, I think Jack. I watched, I think I watched Lost Boys, but I do not recall jack shit about it. I know they were like in California or something. <laughs> Got nice. him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, someone mentions that uh, the cult history with the notion of hunters being like gunslingers and sort of like cowboys or like people in westerns is a motif that starts in this episode that so that's interesting i don't actually recall much about the va- the cowboy stuff in supernatural other than dean has a cowboy kink and also they go back in time and like right. pretend to be cowboys and he does a shootout yeah. that's all, all that i recall which is fascinating because as you know i am kind of into cowboys <laughs> So the fact that I I don't know if like it stems from I'm so shy. Uh. <laughs> Okay. So this has gone on for literally so long. That's it for this episode of Busty Asian Beauties. Next time we'll be talking about season one, episode twenty one, Salvation. Leave us a rating or a review wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on social media. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash beauties podcast and on Tumblr at bustyasianbeautiespod.tumblr.com. Our official tag is babpod, B-A-B-pod. And remember, you can send in questions for the Q&A until midnight Eastern time on April 2nd. Uh, So you can do that through that Twitter and Tumblr, and also our email and YouTube comments. And also thank you to everyone who's donated to our Ko-fi at ko. uh, Sorry, ko-fi.com slash busty asian beauties pod okay you can email us any feedback comments or inquiries again at our email busty asian beauties pod at gmail.com see you guys next time bye, bye. bye.